Greetings, this is Stan Houston, and I'm recording this program of the Master Entrepreneur at uh, 11 o'clock on November 11th. If you know your history, or if you are like me, you've lived quite a bit of history, you'll know that that's a significant time in a significant day. And we will make mention of that and uh, honor the people involved. And then perhaps segue into something that is right now happening in my life and it's happening in everybody else's. Yep, stupidity, incompetence, narcissism. Indeed, every businessman, every businesswoman better be aware of what I call the S-I-N factor. And you know perhaps what that spells. That's what we're going to do today. Again, my name is Stan Houston. This is the Master Entrepreneur. And uh, the program, it begins right now. And indeed, we do welcome you back to this iPod radio broadcast. I simply want to remind you that we're doing what you should do. I will be pointing out to you that every project, that's right, every project should begin with seven podcasts. I don't know what your project is, but I'm going to try and make the case that in the modern era of communications, and business, every project should begin with seven podcasts. And uh, we'll try and make that point to you sometime during the week. Again, it is November 11th, obviously. It's the 11th month and the 11th day. And if you are, again, as old as I am, you may remember that Veterans Day used to be called Armistice Day. And it was a celebration of the fact that literally at 11 o'clock on November 11th, 1918, the most tragic war and therefore the history of mankind came to an end. World War I, the armistice was put into effect. And after millions and millions and millions of men and women had died in truly horrible world war came to an end. And it was a way that we kind of remembered that and we certainly honored those people who had uh, served, obviously honored those people who had died in the service of uh, their country. And as a way of doing that, I remember at 11 o'clock, the whistle or the horn or something would sound, a bell would ring, and wherever we were, uh, walking the streets or in school, which was usually the case, we would stand for a profound minute of silence and then perhaps a prayer. And that was our way that we uh, honored those men and women who had served, particularly in the war and in the wars that followed. It became a little bit ironic because the armistice was supposed to celebrate the war to end all wars. And of course, it certainly didn't do that. And so they made it into something a little more uh, universal for all of us, and that is what it is today, and it is true. I went out early this morning and put up the flag. This is where we celebrate and honor those men and women who have served their country in the armed forces, and particularly those who have stood in harm's way. And again, we honor the memory of those who not only served, but uh, gave the uh, final sacrifice in the service of their country. And uh, in our churches and in many of our organizations, and then of course throughout the country today, it's a time to say thank you to those who've served and to honor those who have served. And we uh, might want to try and do a little bit more of that today. By the way, uh, I will be a little bit off my game this week because on Wednesday, 
I am going to have cataract surgery, at least in one eye and then later on in the uh, second eye. I've been experiencing a little bit of difficulty. It's very natural at this age and stage and in the work I do, doing a lot of speaking, do a lot of screen time, do a lot of teleprompter work that I, I can use some help and I thought new glasses would work. But the doctor said, it's more than that, Stan, and so I will have cataract surgery on a Wednesday. Now, hopefully, I'll be able to see a little bit more clearly. There is a song that some of you may have heard called, I Can See Clearly Now, The Rain Has Gone. Uh, that's been kind of one of my little signatures from uh, time to time. And many of you who know me know that one of my lines is, what is clear to you now? Uh, that's what I ask my friends, my colleagues, my clients. Um, since we last met, what is clear to you now? What do you see more clearly now? And uh, it is not original with me. Supposedly when those two classic, uh, brilliant, transcendental thinkers and philosophers uh, uh, Ralph Waldo Emerson and Henry David Thoreau mapped around Walden Pond, they would say, since we last met, what is clearer to you now? And I actually had one of my clients call me up and cancel an appointment because he said, Stan, I was going to see you on Friday, but I knew that the first question you would ask me is what is clear to me now? And uh, something really became clear and I'm going to act on it and do it and work on it right now so I don't need to talk to you this month. <laughs> That's just fine. And speaking of honoring our veterans, one of the uh, most incredible stories of honoring veterans is the uh, Vietnam Veterans Memorial in Washington, D.C. in the United States of America where all of the men and women who died in that war have their names engraved in the black wall in Washington, D.C. There was quite a story behind that, even though it is very well accepted now that when the first design came out, it was uh, actually made by a young woman in uh, graduate school, or maybe not even graduate school, but her, her design was accepted. And uh, people thought, hmm, it wasn't liked. But later on, she defended this, and the story is, and I would ask you to look it up yourself. She was said to have had the long, clear view. She saw where most people didn't see what an incredible piece of memorial work that was. It really became something incredible because she had a long, clear view. Well, that's particularly important to us today. What is clear to you now? What you would like to have more clarity on? I can probably help you. Again, I'm a longtime business performance coach and I've spent a good many years not only as an international broadcaster, but working with uh, entrepreneurs, particularly spirit-led entrepreneurs, spirit force entrepreneurs, in helping you in all aspects of leadership, marketing, communications, business, and uh, helping you be the kind of leader, not just the owner, not just the manager, but the leader of a business and uh, the leader of a life that makes sense. After all, you're in business, not for your life. <laughs> uh, you are in life, and business is a part of it. So uh, that's what we're all about. And you ne never need to be <laughs> try that again, Stan. You never want to have to deal with the S-I-N factor very often. Stupidity, incompetence, narcissism. And I'm having to deal with that right now. And we'll tell you more. I'm Stan Houston. This is the Christian Entrepreneur Network, tcenglobal.org slash contribute now. 
We would really appreciate your sponsorship of what we do right now. TCENglobal.org slash contribute now. And if we could be of any help to you in any way, raise your hand and say, help me. And if you say, I'd like to be on your program, uh, talk to me. RadioEdge77 at gmail.com. RadioEdge77 at gmail.com. Now, take a break, and we'll come back with the uh, stupidity, incompetence, and narcissism factor. We'll be back. One of my favorite friends, who's also a bit aggravating at times, and his name is Gary, and I'll just let it go at that, and if he happens to listen, he'll uh, know who he is, and he will smile, because uh, he will be just quite happy with my description of him. Gary is a little bit of a curmudgeon. I'd almost call him a Christian curmudgeon. He's a pastor, and a uh, he was a very good pastor, and he still is. But he realized quite uh, early in his pastoral career that he would never be able to make, as a pastor in a small congregation, in a small denomination, he'd never be able to make quite the living that he wanted to. And so he immediately uh, kept putting together little Christian entrepreneur businesses alongside. And he just made it very clear to his congregation that... Uh, he would give more than any full-time pastor ever did, but on the side, he would be creating his own ways, and his wife was also a very talented businesswoman, and so not only in their pastoring of the church, but they uh, created a, a number of small little enterprises that uh, uh, sometimes created a bit of envy because they were very good, and they did quite well as he went on. Gary and I are very good friends, and particularly because a lot of his work uh, alongside of pastoring, alongside of businessing, was in a real profound ministry which dealt with addiction, helping people recover. I mean, he was an incredible guy. He still is. And he was making that go. And I remember one time we were driving along, and we were talking about a certain incident that happened, and... Uh, he took a puff on his pipe and he says, you know, I'm convinced beyond a measure of a doubt, because he's done it for me, God forgives sin. But I think he has a real problem with stupidity. <laughs> I can still remember that. But I think he has a real problem with stupidity. And obviously, uh, my friend Gary did not tolerate stupidity and fools very easily. And his staff and uh, the people who worked with him knew that. A little bit crusty, a little bit of a curmudgeon, but a man who said, Stan, trust Jesus. That's the deal. And I said, well, there's a lot more to it. He said, Stan, trust Jesus. That's the deal. And uh, I think he was probably more right than I knew at that time. Trust Jesus, that's the duel. <laughs> that's the duel, that's the deal. <laughs> it's both. Let me uh, just say, we're going through something where uh, in one of the uh, mission church organizations, I'll let it go, that uh, there's been some problem. And it's just very clear that we're dealing with what I oftentimes call the big three. Stupidity. Just some really stupid things have been done. Some people have been very incompetent. <laughs> they just aren't any good at what they're called to do, and they haven't done a good job. And we're also dealing with people who are totally self-absorbed, and they're looking not only for themselves, narcissism. Stupidity, incompetence, narcissism. That's right, you got me. S-I-N, sin. You see, God gives us creative power, and he doesn't want us to be stupid. 
There's a great line in one of uh, Robertson Davies' books where a young woman cries out, Oh God, don't let me die stupid. Oh God, don't let me die stupid. And that's a prayer that I've written down. Oh God, don't let me die stupid. So I probably shouldn't live in a stupid way. Be really good at what you do. Incompetent. Don't be incompetent. Be good. And if you can't be good at it, don't do it. One of the things I've realized as I've gotten ready for my eye surgery is, oh, there's a million things about eyes and eye health and well-being and how they can treat me that I had no idea. Would you like me to operate on your eye? Of course not. I'm not. I'm totally, totally, totally incompetent. But the man who is going to do the work on me <laughs> is very, very good. But the world is full of people who don't recognize their incompetence and they leave it for others to clean up their mess. Deal with incompetence. Strike out against stupidity. And then there's that old narcissism deal. Treat every person you meet as the most important person in the world. And I keep reminding me of that, and I keep reminding people of that, but unfortunately most people treat themselves as if they were the most important person in the world, and everybody else is to bow down and kind of worship them, take care of them, honor me, treat me as if I were the most important person in the world. Narcissism. Let me tell you, my friends, you will find them. They're all around. You may have hired one. <laughs> you probably uh, have certainly encountered more than one in your life and in your business. You're a Christian entrepreneur. You're the master entrepreneur. You're following the master. Say this, Lord, give me wisdom, courage, and kindness. Give that to me. And Lord, take away my stupidity. Take away my incompetence and keep me away from it. And certainly, don't allow me to become a narcissist. One of the men that I have uh, welcomed into my life simply says, I've come to the point where I say, Lord, give me one daily humiliation. <laughs> Just one hopefully a small one, so I don't take myself too seriously. There we go, my friends. On this uh, Armistice Day, on this Veterans Day, on this Monday meets the marketplace, think about that. Pray for me as I get my surgery. And uh, let's make sure that we learn how to deal with the S-I-N factor in our life, and in our business. I'm Stan Houston. This is The Master Entrepreneur. I can help you be a radio broadcaster, and as you're going to find out, I'm uh, pretty good at helping people do that, and there'll be a number of ways we can do that. We'll bring this to an end at just about 20 minutes, a little bit more, a little bit less, but I know how to do that and how to do the timing right. So uh, please reach out to me at radioedge77 at gmail.com, radioedge77 at gmail.com. I would be grateful and I would be honored because I believe that I and my team, both with the Christian Entrepreneur Network and with What It Takes Radio, what your business needs, we can help you with. I'm really confident about that. So uh, please be in touch with me. Again, RadioEdge77 at gmail.com. You can even call me on the phone and I will call you back. 520-664-7002 in the USA. We'll be back this week, I hope, and uh, I wish you all the best and blessings, and bye for now.
Thank you.